Hello everybody, welcome to day three for credit eight. Uh, we're going to look at using algebra tiles to multiply binomials. So here's an example of using those algebra tiles. Go ahead and watch that video and it should be pretty clear to you. Um, so how does this diagram show that x plus 2 times 2x plus 3 is equal to 2x squared plus 7x's plus 6? So look at that and kind of describe why, where is this 2x plus 3 coming from in this diagram? Where is this x plus 2 coming from in this diagram? And then how is it equivalent to that expression? Okay, and then I want you to draw a, an expanded form. Uh, how does this work, right? So x plus 3 and x plus 1, when it's multiplied together, draw that picture of the algebra tiles, how it would look. Uh, then we come to this where it talks about... Um, using the distributive property twice. Okay, so you multiply, uh, distributive property says that you can multiply what's in front over the addition or subtraction. So ne uh, negative 3x times 4x is negative 12x squared. Negative 3x times negative 5 would be positive 15x. So this is an equivalent expression to that. Now um, what we're doing is using that distributive t property twice. So you have this so kind of picture this as a whole unit right here. This is an actual number. So like, uh, just as an example, let's just say that x is equal to 1, right? So this is 1 plus 5, which is 6, right? So this thing, I can multiply s this thing times both of those things inside the parentheses. So I'm multiplying kind of the, the 6 idea, right? Times both of those. So you get this x plus 5 times x minus x plus 5 times 7. So it's just distributed. Now we distribute again. So we kind of back distribute. x times x is x squared, and x times 5 is 5x. And then 7 times x is 7x, and 7 times 5 is 35. So you do that distributive twice, and then combine any like terms. So 5x minus 7x would be negative 2x. And then I also have to distribute this negative across both of those. So it's minus 7x and minus 35, so that's why we get the minus 35 there. Okay, so go ahead and do the same idea. Distribute twice this x plus 5 times x, and then x plus 5 times 6, and then we distribute it back. So x squared plus 5x, and then distribute it back. It'd be 6x plus 36, and then combine like terms. So I did the first one for you, and you will do these others after that. Okay. Um, look at look back at the work that you did in problem B. Compare the results to the equivalent factor forums. Okay, is there a pattern to what are those coefficients? Is there a pattern to it? And yeah, maybe you look at this one especially. This x plus a times x plus b. That's just a hint. Okay, now we're going to look at perfect squares. So this this whole thing is multiplying times itself. That's what squared means, right? So x plus a times x plus a is what that is. So you can expand it out and then do the same thing, right? Multiply. So this is x plus 5 times x plus 5. And we're going to double distribute. So x plus 5 times x and x plus 5 times 5. And then you know, back distribute x squared plus 5x, and this is 5x plus 25, and then the 5x is combined to make 10x, right? So x squared plus 10x plus 25, and you would do that on all these, um, even with the negatives. And then here it says, look back on that work and do you see a, a shortcut? Is there a shortcut for from expanding the perfect squares? Instead of uh, doing that double distributive, distributing twice, is there a shortcut that you could use for finding out what the uh, perfect square of two binomials is? Uh, then we come upon this. So this one, it looks like we kind of have a pattern here that it's plus and minus, plus and minus, plus and minus. And uh, what happens here when you have the signs are different. So we'll do the same thing, double distribute, and then is there a pattern that you can look at um, with these as well? 
Okay, then you're going to watch the video on factoring trinomials. And factoring trinomials kind of goes backwards, right? You start with something like this and you go back to something like that. So now we're going to kind of undistribute or go backwards. Okay, so you're going to factor these um, these different forms. So what you want to do is figure what what do I multiply to get this last one? So I don't know. I could do I like to do that big X like I just showed you in the video. So what factors of six are there, and what do I add to get seven? So I could do um, two and three, right? That doesn't add to seven though. How about one and six? That does add to seven. So then I put it in my general rectangle and I say 6x and 1x this is x squared and this is 6 so this would be x plus 6 and x plus 1 right so x plus 6 x plus 1 okay so that's how you would go about doing those you do want to check to see if there is something that you can factor out of all terms first so this j one's a little tricky so is there something I could factor out first before I do my general rectangle? Okay, and then here the signs are a little bit different. So, oh, and this one also you want to check, can you factor something out of both terms before? Um, so this one you have negative numbers, but it's the same deal, right? So I. I say, what do I multiply to get 12, but when I add, it's negative 7. Well, they're going to both have to be negative, right? So let's try negative 3, negative 4, right? And that multiplies to positive 12. But when I add them, it's negative 7. So then I could do the general rectangle. So minus 3x, minus 4x, x squared, and minus 7. Did I do that right? x times x. This is minus 3. Oh no, 12 goes here. 12. And this is minus 4. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so x minus 3, x minus 4, and that's how you can do those and again check to see can you factor something out of both terms first uh, so this one might be a little bit more difficult okay then we have some some differences squared. these you can pretend that there's like plus zero x's in between plus zero x's so that's kind of your middle term. Okay, and go ahead and answer the stuff in your notebook. There you go.